Thomas at the Big Big Bridge. It was a special day for the railway. We're here to We're here to launch the new rail light through the mountains of Sodor, Sir Thomas had announced. Today we open the big big bridge. What a wonderful what wonderful news. Everyone cheered. The mountains were beautiful. The people of Sodor couldn't wait to visit them. Everyone wanted to see the big, big bridge. It had towers so high the tops touched the, touched the sky. And the valley beneath was so deep that when you were on the bridge, you could barely see the ground. <laughs> Thomas was excited about the new rail line. This really is a special day. Mm, he said happily. Then Henry chugged up to Thomas. The big engine frowned. I don't want to go to the mountains, Henry said nervously. It's windy up there. Very, very windy. Henry didn't like the wind. He Henry didn't like rain or snow or hell either. You're a big engine, Henry, Thomas said. You shouldn't be afraid of a little wind. But Henry was afraid, and that made Thomas a bit afraid too. Gordon, Henry, Thomas, hitch up your coaches, called Sir Thomas Hat. It's time for your first trip to the mountains. T Percy and James were glad, and they didn't have to go to the mountains. They were afraid to cross the Big Bay Bridge too. There's nothing to be afraid of, Thomas insisted, in, in a voice loud enough for Percy and James to hear. It will, it will be easy to cross the big, big bridge. Thomas and Henry chugged up to the platform. Thomas and Henry chugged to the platform. Gordon, the express agent, was already there. His coaches were full of passengers. Annie and Clarabelle were soon hitched behind Thomas. Hurry, hurry, they called. All aboard, cried the conductor. Sir Thomas had turned to the crowd and waved his hat one last time. Toot, toot, whistled Gordon. Follow me. In a burst of steam, the big blue engine was off. Soon the trains were rolling through the countryside in a long line. Gordon took, took the lead. Behind him chugged Henry. Then, because he was the smallest, came Thomas. All, all along the way, people came out of their houses and cheered, cheered when they saw the trains go by. At the foot of the mountain, Henry slowed to a crawl. These mountains are much too high, he moaned. I can't go. I'm afraid of heights. Eats, don't be silly. E. Thomas said, said Thomas bravely. I'll be right be I'll be right here behind you. But Henry didn't budge. He, he was very nervous, and that made Thomas nervous too. Come on, Thomas gently pushed Henry. We have to go. The brand new tracks were smooth and shiny, but Henry barely Nearly moved along them. The truth was, Henry didn't want to reach the top of the mountain because then he'd have to cross the big, big bridge. If Percy and James and Henry are all afraid, thought Thomas, maybe I should be afraid too. The tracks grew steep as Thomas and Henry puffed up the mountain. They could barely keep up with Gordon. The big blue engine rushed ahead. Gordon was the strong engine. The steep tracks didn't tire him at all. 
Lead for us, Hedry called, but Gordon climbed higher and higher until he was out of sight. I don't think I could make it, Hedry groaned, his steam giving out. This mountain is too steep. Keep going, Thomas urged him. We can't let a little mountain stop us. But Henry, but Thomas was having trouble chugging up the steep mountain too. He was beginning to worry about crossing the big, big bridge. Finally, Thomas and Henry he arrived at the top of the mountain. There it was, the big, big bridge. It was high. It was windy, too. It was windy up there, too. Very, very windy. I won't go, Henry declared. But we have to cross, Thomas said bravely. Our passengers want to see the mountains on the other side. Hurry, hurry, Indian Clarabel cried. The coaches were so excited that Thomas had trouble keeping them in line. Thomas searched the tracks ahead. Gordon was nowhere to be seen. He had already crossed the bridge and rolled into the mountains beyond. Thomas and Henry were alone. I'll go first, Thomas said at last. Then you can follow me, Henry. If the wind blows, close your eyes, Henry said. That way, you won't see anything scary. Quick, quack, quick, quack, quick, quack. Thomas began to cross the bridge. Thomas looked up. He could see the cotton clouds touch the top of the bridge. Nervously, he looked down, but the bridge was so high he couldn't see the ground. Mm. A sudden gust of wind shook the bridge. This scared Thomas, is, and he closed his eyes so tightly he, that he couldn't see where he was going. Click, clack, click, clack, click, crash! Thomas came to a sudden stop. He opened one eye for a quick peek. Oh no, he cried. His wheels were off the track. Are you all right? Mm, he called Henry. I'm stuck. Mm, Thomas said glumly. I couldn't see where I was going, and my front wheels have jumped the track. Just then, Gordon returned. He frowned when he saw Thomas stuck in the middle of the bridge. Go find Harold, Gordon called to Henry. Relieved, Henry backed down the mountain and to find a helicopter. Thomas kept his eyes closed. He was too afraid to look. But inside the coaches, the passengers enjoyed the wonderful view. Finally, Thomas heard in the world of rotors. Harold was here to rescue him. Slowly, Thomas opened his eyes. He looked at the blue ooh, sky above the great mountains all, all around. What a lovely view, he exclaimed. I was silly to shut my eyes. I almost missed everything. Hinch the rope mm, to your buffer and hold on, Harold cried. In no time at all, Harold had lifted Thomas back onto the tracks. Mm, Thomas backed up to where Henry waited. Come on, Henry, said Thomas. The view is spectacular. I should never have been afraid. With that, Thomas turned and chugged happily across the big, big bridge. Henry watched with wonder. If he's not afraid, maybe I should be either, Henry decided. Slowly, the big green engine made its way across the bridge, too. Soon, Thomas and Henry arrived at the station house. The mountains were really lovely. He was happy. He too, everyone was happy to have seen them, but Thomas was the happiest of all. He was proud that he had crossed the big, big bridge. The End